Good morning and welcome across the state of Montana. We're going to be talking about art today. In fact, three generations of artists. We're joined today with Steve Seltzer from Great Falls. Steve, nice to have you on the program. Thanks, Fred. Your family goes back a long, long way, and we'd like to talk about that, and we're going to talk about some of your work, and, and maybe you can even do some demonstrations for us. But the name O.C. Seltzer, that is who? Well, that's my grandfather, and most people that live in Montana are familiar with that name, uh, uh, particularly if they've ever been to the Russell Museum. They've got a pretty good display of his work there. And he's not a native Montanan, is he? No, no. He uh, actually was born in Copenhagen, Denmark, and uh, emigrated to the United States when he was 13 years old. He and his mother uh, came directly from Copenhagen right to Great Falls, Montana. Why did they pick Great Falls? Any idea? Yes. As a matter of fact, uh, uh, his mother's, uh, uh, a relative of his mother's had come over and was working at the old silver smelter in Great Falls and he wrote back to them and said, uh, life is wonderful and I'm making a dollar a day and you should come over. <laughs> so that's what they did. Your grandfather, did he get started early in art? Uh, yes, as a matter of fact, he uh, he was studying uh, a little bit over in uh, Copenhagen as a as a student in school. He was his talent was recognized even then at, a, at an early age by people in the school, and he was taking special classes. Uh, so it, it, uh, it definitely he had the, the the touch for it at, at an early age. That's something that always comes up in conversations. Is art something that that people maybe are born with the talent, or do they learn it? I think uh, I think you have to have a certain uh, bent in that direction. Uh, you have to have the interest and the desire to persevere and, and get get over the the, uh, the difficulties of learning. Uh, and of course, for someone that's interested, it isn't it isn't all that difficult. So you you progress along. But I, I definitely think it, it's important to have a certain uh, God-given ability along those lines. Your grandfather, what kind of medium did he paint with? Uh, we're, going, we're going back quite some time. I'm sure that the paints that are used today are quite different from what he was using. Well, uh, in some respects they are. Uh, however, uh, good paints were available uh, and have been for, for a long, long time. He uh, was equally adept at both watercolor and uh, oil painting. And uh, he did, when he first began painting, uh, he, he used both and continued to throughout his career. And uh, even in, uh, even when, you know, when he got to Great Falls, he was able to get real good high quality uh, materials and paint, even as far back as the 1900s, so it was available. Somewhere along the line, he and uh, uh, Charlie Russell befriended each other. Can you tell us a little bit yes, about that story? Yes, uh, as a matter of fact, I have a written uh, a letter that my grandfather wrote later in his life and he said probably the most important day of his life was in uh, March of 1897 when he had the opportunity to meet Charlie Russell and uh, that they struck up a friendship and and uh, which uh, continued on until they were uh, well until Russell died in 26 uh, they used to go out uh, on camping trips and they got together quite often and and sketched and exchanged ideas. Of course, Russell was 13 years older and uh, somewhat of a, of a mentor, really, for my grandfather. And uh, my grandfather always said that he, he uh, was, you know, very much influenced by Russell and uh, uh, got a lot out of their association. Is there a correlation between the two, the success that they both shared, do you think? Uh, I think uh, I think that, of course, Russell uh, eventually wound up uh, his career and, and uh, his reputation far exceeded my grandfather's in the sense of uh, the value of his work and, and his notoriety. Uh, so uh, in that respect, I think, you know, Russell is, is much more widely known. And, uh, but my grandfather... Uh, has also enjoyed a significant reputation in the Western art field and, and uh, is known really uh, in most of the art circles too. And some of his work is displayed, we were talking before we started uh, in, at the Gilcrease in, in Tulsa, some of his work is displayed there, correct? Oh yeah, they have a, uh, probably the biggest collection of his work in existence. They have over 400 of his paintings. It was largely a collection uh, put together by a gentleman by the name of Philip Cole 
who was uh, probably my grandfather's biggest patron, was buying work from him. He lived in New York and he bought work from him in the 20s and 30s and even into the early 40s. That was the, uh, uh, the bulk of what he bought. And then before you, there was a gentleman in between your father. How, did, how does this all fit together as far as three generations of artists? Well, uh, my father also was, was very much interested in, in the art uh, world and uh, always wanted to be a professional artist. Uh, didn't really have the opportunity to, to uh, practice as a professional. Um, his time really to be a professional artist was during probably the worst time in history, uh, and I'm speaking of the Great Depression years, and uh, you were real thankful if you had a job, period, much less uh, trying to support yourself as, as an artist. And it was even tough then uh, for the uh, professional artists that had established reputation. So, unfortunately, he, uh, he never really got the opportunity to, to uh, become a professional artist, but he always did things during his uh, life, and uh, uh, he was always sketching and preparing for the day that he was going to retire and, and uh, do his art on a, a little more of a full-time basis. We're going to show the folks a, a couple of pieces that, that you have here that, that your father did, and, and truly a gifted artist. Maybe you could talk a little bit about the two pieces. Yeah, he certainly was. He, he, he definitely had a lot of talent. Uh, these two pieces that you're going to show are a couple of uh, Native American portraits that he did uh, in a watercolor medium. And I think anybody familiar with the watercolor can see that they're, they're very well done. And uh, these were uh, a couple of... Uh, individuals that he actually knew. Uh, the one shot of a young boy, uh, Cree Indian, was, was a, a Native American that uh, on occasion would stop by the house when my dad was younger. Uh, and uh, he was looking uh, to see if he could do a little modeling work for my grandfather. But uh, at any rate, my dad actually got to meet him. How did you get involved in the painting? Did it come through your father, or is this, this something that, that you watched him, or was it from education, or what? No, I, I think, uh, you know, I grew up in a house with, uh, I, was, I was surrounded by my grandfather's work hanging on the walls, and I watched my dad sitting at the kitchen table almost on a daily basis, uh, sketching and drawing and doing watercolors. So I was naturally uh, real interested from a from an early, from my early years, and I, of course, began to, to try and emulate what I saw him doing, and and he would help me out from time to time, and and uh, so that that's really, you know, I I can remember drawing and trying watercolors uh, just from my very earliest years. Before you even started your education there, public education. You oh, were? oh yeah, absolutely. <clears throat> I uh, I have things that my mother saved that go back to when I was. Uh, five, six years old. Are you amazed when you look at that and where you're at today? <laughs> I certainly am. <laughs> yeah, they were, uh, of course, very amateurish, as you can well imagine, uh, as everybody is when they start out. Uh, it takes a long, long time to, to uh, develop the skills, you know, to, to really do accomplished work. Your career has, has done so well that you're one of only two people that have been in every Charles Russell auction and had art in every auction since it started. Is, isn't that correct? Yes, I ha that's right. Uh, myself and uh, Bob Morgan from Helena are the two that started out. Uh, we were charter members of the auction and, and we're still, we're still uh, submitting and, and selling our work there every year. It's been 35 years now. Uh, I guess you might say that I was in the right place at the right time. Uh, I was, it was a very small town affair when it began and uh, uh, I was lucky to get in on the ground floor and, and grow with it. Are you amazed at, at what it's today? Oh, absolutely. It's, uh, it's a huge undertaking and uh, I, I can remember I have a, an article from the Tribune uh, regarding the first auction and it, the headline was $25,000 worth of art to be sold. And that was the sum total of everybody, <laughs> everybody's work. So, And now, it's, of course, it's hundreds of thousands of dollars, so it's considerably bigger. I'm not sure if this was a first for you or not, but this past Russell auction, best of show, is that, is that correct? Am I 
Yes, I actually won two awards this year. I got the uh, for the same painting. I got the jurors uh, award, which is the best to show. That's picked by the three jurors, and then I also got the artist choice award, which is also a real nice honor. I was very pleased to to uh, get both of those this year. As you look back at your grandfather O.C. Seltzer's works, your father's works, and your for your works. How have they changed? Have they changed a lot? Do you, do you see anything at all in relationship to what you're doing compared to what your grandfather and father did? Absolutely, yeah. My work uh, uh, over the years has changed considerably both in, in subject matter and technique. Uh, early on, of course, I was very much influenced by uh, my grandfather's work and that of my dad's. And, and subject matter-wise, I was pretty much 100% uh, doing the historical uh, Western subject matter, but in the last uh, oh ten to twelve years, I've I've branched out into a lot more uh, different kinds of subject matter. A lot of landscapes, uh, more contemporary things, figurative things, and uh, I, I guess I'm getting further and further away from historical subject matter all the time. I I think uh, I probably maybe ten to fifteen percent of my work is historical in nature now. There's a lot of young people that, that uh, take art in, in school and that kind of thing and they think perhaps they, they could make a living at it. It's, it's like a lot of other fields. Music is one that comes to mind. There's a lot of folks out there that are good artists that, that commercially don't do well. Isn't that correct? Yes, that, that's true. It's, uh, it's a difficult uh, profession to, to actually earn a living at when you're uh, uh, in my case, uh, I, I create artwork and then I hope to find a market for it. Uh, I, I, that's in contrast to, say, an artist that, uh, in the commercial line that uh, works for a firm and, and does commercial type work. But in the fine arts field, uh, whether it be painting or sculpture, uh, it, it is very difficult. There's lots of competition. There's lots of, of um, artists out there that are vying for the, for the patron's dollar. and. Uh, if I had it, if I knew what I was going to go through in the last 35 years, I <laughs> probably uh, would have been discouraged right from the get-go. Steve, Montana is a sparsely populated state. Per capita, do you think we have more artists in Montana than other areas? There, there are an awful lot of, of artists in Montana, and uh, a lot of them actually are doing fairly well, and I, I think I can't say for sure if other states uh, have more or less per capita, but uh, uh, I think uh, the one thing I would say is Montana is a, uh, the people of Montana have always supported the artists very well. And I think in that respect, uh, it's a great place to live and, and to pursue this uh, uh, business. So I think that's good. We should back up. I want to ask one question. We talked about this given talent that some people have for art. Probably you wouldn't discourage someone who doesn't have that natural ability, but they could learn to at least something to entertain themselves with and, and enjoy. Oh, absolutely. I think, uh, you know, it's a wonderful pastime, even if someone doesn't plan on supporting themselves or becoming a, a professional. I think everyone should try painting because it's, uh, if you approach it from the right perspective, it can be a very uh, rewarding, worthwhile uh, uh, hobby, really. And uh, you can always get better, uh, no matter who you are. There's, there's always uh, an opportunity to learn, get better, and enjoy yourself while you're doing it. Given the choice, when, when you uh, are working in your studio, what do you prefer to work with? What medium do you like? Do you like the acrylics? Do you like watercolors? What's your, your favorite? I, uh, I work exclusively with oil paint now because I, I think it's the most versatile medium there is. I used to do uh, watercolors as well, and I even tried acrylics too, but uh, I think the oil paint is, uh, has got the most potential for what I want to accomplish. Uh, the, every, every medium has different uh, characteristics, different uh, qualities, and uh, every artist, depending on what they want to do, will probably uh, find one that works best for them. But for me, it's oil. You watch on television some of the different shows where they make painting look really easy and it's done in a certain sequence of events. So from talking to you before we started, that's really not true. Isn't it up to the individual artist how you work? 
Yeah, I think everybody works a little differently. Those, the, sometimes the uh, TV painters, it's, uh, it's a little bit misleading as to uh, uh, how a work of art is created. Actually, in my work, I work all over the surface of the painting. I don't start in one corner and, and uh, finish it and, and wind up on the other corner and it's done. I, I work back and forth uh, many, many sessions uh, all over the painting. Is that because oil takes longer to dry or just because that's the way you like to paint? Well, I think uh, for my, what I'm trying to accomplish, I think it's a necessity that I work all over the painting because it's a constant uh, comparing uh, sort of a situation. You're always, uh, you can't tell what you've got until you compare it to something else, whether it be color or value. So you, you have to have the whole picture, the whole painting going for you so you can make those comparisons and make the adjustments that are necessary. I'm going to step back a little bit so that you can show the folks what you're working on here, the piece that you're, you're working on, and, and maybe you can show us a little bit about what you've talked about, the different techniques okay. that you can use, and, and uh, where yeah. you got the idea from this. Yeah, this is a, uh, this is a landscape that I, uh, I'm just barely getting started on. It's kind of a, what I call the initial lay-in, and it's a scene on the uh, uh, on Belt Creek uh, near the Armington Junction actually. A little bit of snow on the distant hills. It's, a, it's, an, early, uh, it's an early piece early in the year. There aren't really any leaves on the trees. It's pr everything is pretty much in fall colors. And, uh, but I like the, uh, the potential there. I like the shapes. Uh, when, I, when I look at a, uh, a scene or whatever it is that, that uh, I'm thinking about in terms of uh, uh, whether it has potential as a as a painting. I always I look at uh, I always tell my students when I teach I I, th I you have to look at shape. Do you see change in your future? Well, I do. I think the emphasis for me now is more on contemporary things that I can actually see and make my own interpretation and. Uh, so for me, landscapes, uh, contemporary figure things are, are, I think, the direction I'm going with my art. Uh, and I think the historical subject matter is probably uh, going to be less and less important. Well, Steve, that uh, yourself and your father and your grandfather, great artists who have left a tremendous impact on the state of Montana. We appreciate a half hour of your time. And hopefully we've got some budding artists out there who will be inspired and uh, we'll carry on the tradition that your family has. It's certainly been enjoyable to talk to you today. I hope so, Fred. Thank you. Thank you for uh, joining yeah. us today.